Okay, so I'm recording this video the night of... Actually, it's the morning of Saturday, March 20th. It's 1.25 a.m. in the morning, meaning that this video is going to be uploaded onto YouTube in about eight hours-ish time from when I'm actually recording this audio. So we don't know how accurate this is. But the report came out about 12-ish hours ago from Kevin Weeks on Twitter that he is hearing word that the Buffalo Sabres and the Colorado Avalanche appear to be close on a deal involving... Jonas Johansson. Now, this is a really interesting move to be right here. Again, we don't really know if this is actually going to happen at the time of this audio recording. By the time this video is uploaded, maybe there will be a trade already done. Maybe there will already be details and all that stuff confirmed. So stay tuned to the comments because I'm sure a lot of lovely people are going to update us on the situation as that goes on. But this is a crazy significant move because if you take a look at the Colorado Avalanche and how exactly they've been performing this season, let's go over to the NHL standings real quick now, shall we? They are indeed one of the best teams in their division when it comes to goals against. At the time of this recording, they've got 65. And a lot of that has to do with the goaltending they have been receiving from one Philip Grubauer, a guy who, if you take a look at his numbers, they've been absolutely outstanding this season. I cannot even stress how good Philip Grubauer has been so far. He is at a 1.82 goals against average and a 9.25 save percentage. That's crazy in its own right in a normal season. But when you have a season like this, where goalies that are starters in the North Division, for example, are at 9.0 save percentages and they're at 2.8 plus goals against averages... What Grubauer is doing here as the Colorado Avalanche starting goaltender is absolutely phenomenal. They've seen five games of somebody not named Grubauer, that was Hunter Mishka, with 4.16 goals against average and an 8.38 save percentage. Not even close to comparable there. Philip Grubauer has been in a position where everybody's kind of said it the entire time. You know, the writing is on the wall here. The Avalanche need backup goaltending. They cannot afford to rely on Grubauer the amount they have. Even though they're winning, the problem is what's going to happen when a Grubauer goes out there? What's going to happen when an inevitable injury comes here for this guy who has just been an absolute all-star, an absolute stud for your team? Quite literally, one of the top goaltenders in the entire NHL in terms of these statistical categories. He is first at the time of this recording in terms of that goals against average number. Second is Marc-Andre Fleury, then you have Vasilevsky, then you have Capo Kakinen. Lots of really good names over here. In fact, only three guys under the two goals against average mark. Safe percentage, though, he is kind of lacking a little bit there. He is down there at fifth. So, yeah, kind of lacking. I'm kind of talking about it in a sarcastic way. But Nedeljkovic over here, Kakinen, Vasilevsky, Flurry, all with good save percentages as well. But for Grubauer, he's in a position where the guy probably would need a backup goaltender that is reliable. The problem here is, according to Kevin Weeks, the goalie coming back to Colorado is Jonas Johansson. And you know what? Let's just let the tweets do the talking over here. This is a tweet from John Vogel. He is a Buffalo Beat reporter. He does stuff for The Athletic for the Sabres, and he spoke yesterday about how the Buffalo Sabres signed goaltender Michael Hauser, who was with the Rochester Americans. Why, you might ask. Teams must always have three goalies on the roster or the taxi squad. Ulmark is out, so Buffalo has Carter Hutton, Jonas Johansson, and Dustin Tokarski. Remember Tokarski? Ooh, man, miss myself with some Tokarski over there. If, by chance, a team wants to acquire Hutton or Johansson as insurance at the trade deadline, the Sabres would have had to call up Uko Pekalukunen to the roster or taxi squad because no other Americans had NHL contracts, and now they'll have the option to put Hauser on the taxi squad. This was yesterday. It was a move that the Sabres did, probably because they want to go out there and actually give Uko Pekalukunen consistent playing time over there with the Rochester Americans in the AHL, which isn't a bad move. You know, Uko Pekalukunen, obviously, cool name aside, has been a guy that has been in this Buffalo system and that Sabres fans are really excited for going into the long-term future. So the Sabres yesterday signed a goalie because they wanted to have the proper amount of names attached to their roster that would allow them to make a trade and still keep Uka Pekalukunen in the AHL should they make a trade. And now, 
Jonas Johansson is likely going to Colorado, according to Kevin Weeks. I can say this without hesitation, that the Avalanche are getting the worst goalie I have seen during my 19 seasons covering the Buffalo Sabres. He doesn't stop pucks in practice or in games. Then he links a few other tweets that he has made in the past about Johansson. There are a lot of goal celebrations this morning on this January 2nd Buffalo Sabres exhibition. If he wants any chance of beating out Carter Hutton as Linus Olmark's backup, he is going to have to get a lot better in a hurry, especially with no exhibition games. Then, this is a tweet from January 19th, Jonas Johansson has shown that he is not an NHL-caliber goalie at all. And you know what? <laughs> My first instinct when reading this thread, I was like, okay, that's kind of harsh. You can't be that hard on a guy, right? Oh my goodness, that is absolutely savage. He is the worst goalie I have seen in 19 years. He can't stop pucks in practices or in games. I was like, okay, how bad can he be? Check over his stats. Let's go over Jonas Johansson, 25 years old, drafted by the Sabres in 2014. Last year with the Rochester Americans, he had a winning record. Look at this, 14-4-5 and at 2.28 goals against average and 9-2-1 save percentage. That's not bad. Definitely not bad. But this season at the NHL level, seven games played. He's 0-5-1 and an 8-8-4 save percentage. That's really not great. And a 3.79 goals against average. Yeah, that's really, really not great either. So... You know, if the Avalanche are getting this guy, Jonas Johansson, who is indeed a statistical upgrade over the guy they have in net as their backup right now in Hunter Mishka over here, then, you know, I could sort of understand why. I mean, obviously, you're not going to go out here and take a look at this guy, Johansson, and expect him to be Grubauer 2.0. You're just looking for a stable backup goalie to be there on the off nights or on the back-to-backs or whatever, because Grubauer has been amazing this season. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. He has been incredible. So it's only going to take so long before this guy who is being played all these games eventually gets a little bit worn out or a little bit tired or a little bit fatigued or if something, by golly gee, something happens to him that causes him to miss some time. The Avalanche are treading on thin ice right here. And if Jonas Johansson is coming in as the backup, we'll just see how that's able to go down because according to John Vogel, who apparently does have a voice in this Buffalo Sabres beat writing community and definitely don't doubt that he has had a place in it, apparently this guy is just really not good. But you know what? Hey, I'm making this video, taking the shots, kind of reading the tweets, and kind of being negative about this guy that might become a new Avalanche goaltender in the next 12 hours. But I hope that this guy proves me wrong. I hope that he comes out here if he does get traded to Colorado, because according to Kevin Weeks, it looks like he will be. I hope he just goes out there and becomes the best backup goaltender the Colorado Avalanche could have asked for, because you love to see the reclamation projects and you love to see players proving people wrong. And I'm talking all this smack about this guy, just reading off of the tweets here, but you know what? If he does well, he does well. I'll eat my words. I'll reclaim this video as wrong, but we have to wait ourselves a little bit to see if that's actually going to transpire. So talk to me in the comments if this trade actually happened, because I'm recording this the night before, the morning before. If this trade actually happened, let me know in the comments what actually happened and what you think about everything, because I will not be in the present time of recording this video to give you my thoughts. We might talk about this later. I don't really know. We have another Canucks and Habs game to go over, which is going to be fun. But talk to me in the comments if you think I hope you enjoyed this British Rose 99. And bye.